Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Franny and today I have for you a book haul. As many of us did, I'm pretty sure, to cope with what was happening in the world and what is still happening in the world, I bought some books from the beginning of January till basically now. Long story short, for some reasons that I don't want to bother you with, I couldn't send these books to the address where I was currently staying at that moment, but what I could do is I could send them home to my hometown and that's what I did. Therefore, today's haul is just a part of the books that I got during lockdown. I divided these books in different piles. I have some non-fiction, I have some YA and I have some fiction slash literary fiction. So without further ado, let's get started. Also, these books are not from Amazon. I got more than half of them from a second-hand bookstore that gives money to charity when you purchase books from them, which made me very, very happy because they came in really good conditions. And that's something that I kind of care about, but they're still used, so that's really good. Let's start with YA, shall we? The first book I want to show you is The Coldest Girl in Cold Town by Holly Black. I haven't read anything by Holly Black at this point, and I think back when this book was released, I bought it. I tried to read it, I didn't finish it, and then I sold it. <laughs> I sold it again. I have been wanting to try something by Holly Black, and vampires are kind of coming back. And I think that this book has a different take on vampires, not the Stephanie Meyer take. Um, not that I don't like it, but it's just something different from what we usually see uh, when it comes to vampires portrayed in YA books. I don't know much about it. I don't remember anything from when I was reading it, so whenever I pick it up, it's going to be a surprise. Next, we have the first book in a series, I think it's a trilogy, that I've been wanting to start for a long time and that is The Dark Days Club by Alison Goodman. Um, sorry for the light, this is going to be a problem, I'll try not to move it too much. Um, this is the first book in a series, it's set I think in Victorian London and it's fantasy, there are demons? London 1812. 18-year-old Lady Helen Rexhall is on the eve of her debut presentation at the royal court of George III. Her life should revolve around gowns, dancing, and securing a suitable marriage. Instead, when one of her family's mates disappears, she's drawn into the shadows of the Regency London. And it has demons, so I was right about that. I heard great things about this trilogy. All the books are huge. I love books with demons. I love books set in this historical time. It has all the good cards to be a great book. Next is a book I already read and I absolutely adored. It was so wonderful. I <laughs> Club When You Land by Elizabeth Acevedo. Now, let me be shallow for a second, okay? Because the only reason why I got the hardcover is a very, very shallow reason. This is the dust jacket, then if you remove the dust jacket, you have this on one side, this, and then this on the other side. Because this book is set both in the Dominican Republic and in New York. This book talks about two sisters who don't know that they are sisters. They only find out when their dad dies in a plane crash. So they're trying to deal with their respective grief for their father's death, as well as dealing with what's going on in their respective lives and what it means to have a sister you knew nothing about. It's written in verse. This was incredible. In August, spoiler alert, I happened to read Heartstopper by Alice Oseman. Heartstopper is the cutest, sweetest, most adorable LGBT graphic novel series of all times that could ever exist. I fell in love so hard with Charlie and Nick, so when I was done with the three volumes that are currently out, I needed more. I needed more by Alice Oseman because she created something that was so cute that Oh my god, I can't even deal with it. So I decided to purchase Solitaire and that's when it's way. Solitaire is a YA novel. 
I don't know what it is about, but the main protagonist of that book is Charlie's sister. And I really liked her in Heart Supper. She has such a weird vibe going on and I loved her for it. So I want to read that book very soon. The one that I have here and that I can show you is Loveless by Alice Oseman. This is her most recent publication. And all I know about it is that the main protagonist is asexual. I don't think I've read a book with an asexual main character or character in it. Maybe I have, but it wasn't explicitly said. So I'm really excited to get into this one, hopefully soon. Now we're moving on to fiction. The first book that I want to show you guys is Smothered by Autumn Chiklis, I think. This is the story of a graduate student that after finishing university goes back to living at home, in her childhood home. She has to live with her parents, she doesn't have a job, she doesn't really have career prospects and obviously that's a very tough place to be. I speak from experience. So I'm really excited to see what this book is going to be like, also because it has emails, it has texts, it has page diaries, and I absolutely love when authors do that with books, when they incorporate different kinds of text to make the story more engaging and interacting, and I absolutely love that. Then I have A Redbird Christmas by Fanny Flagg. She is the author of Green Fried Tomatoes at the Whistle Stop Cafe, and that's a book that I really, really want to read hopefully very soon. I got it because it was on sale on this website, Better World Books, that I really recommend you guys to go and check out. They have very cheap prices. You can find books in very great conditions. If you purchase from them, as I said before, you're doing some charity, which is always great. Um, so here is the signature. So there you go. I guess that it's set during Christmas. That's all I know. Next is Bel Canto by Anne Patchett. I haven't read anything by Anne Patchett, but I've heard great things about this book. I know that it's set in South America and there's a luscious party going on and at some point terrorists burst in and obviously the party is over and everything goes awry. I've heard really amazing things and I think that there is an opera singer or music in some way has a huge part in this book and that's what interested me right away because I truly love when books feature either food or music. That's that's my gem. I love when that happens. So hopefully this book won't disappoint. The Book of Essie by Megan Mecklin Weir. I read this book last year and it was one of my favorite books of last year. It's one of my favorite books of all times. It deals with so many things. It has LGBT themes, it talks about conversion camps, it talks about sexual assault, rape, cults, how it is to grow up in a very religious family and what it means, what it entails for the protagonist to put some space between her and her family. It talks about media, it talks about journalism, about reality TV. What I love about this book is that it does doesn't condemn anything. This book just tells you a story and it shares the perspectives of three different characters and it really puts you in their shoes. Because at first I was like, no, there's no way a girl, a young girl can convince a young boy to marry her because she's pregnant but not with his baby. That's not a believable situation. That can't happen in real life. But then as you read, you realize, yes, goddammit, that's possible. Things are never what they seem. It doesn't tell you what's right and what's wrong. It just shows you what they're feeling. And then you go from there. And the last book in this category of mine is The Buried Giant by Kazuo Ishiguro. I still have to figure out how to remove this plastic jacket thing. All I know about this book is that it is a retelling of the Arthurian myth or it has something to do with the Arthurian myth. I have a very complicated relationship with Kazuo Ishiguro at this point because I read and absolutely adored The Remains of the Day but then I read Never Let Me Go or I tried to read Never Let Me Go and that did not go well at all. It didn't go well. I think I read 50 pages and then I was like, no, this thing is not doing it for me. It's, it's not doing it for me. So I don't know 
Hopefully this is good. Then we have non-fiction. The first non-fiction book I want to show you guys is something that I'm so excited to have. Again, for a very shallow reason. The reason being, I just wanted to physically own this book because I listened to it multiple times because it's awesome and I love the narrator and some of you might know, should know what I'm talking about. Born a Crime by Trevor Noah, my beloved Trevor Noah. What can I say? The thing is, I love Trevor Noah narrating his own book because I love his voice, I love the fact that he speaks in different South African languages so you can listen to different languages and I, it's amazing, it's beautiful. But I wanted to have the book because it's absolutely gorgeous and it's Trevor Noah and I feel like at some point I want to read the book, like I want to read the words on the page. But for now, I'll, I'll just keep listening to it, let's be honest. Then I have what I think you could describe as a coffee table book. And it is The Stylist's Guide to New York City. Basically, this is a collection of stores, services, galleries, markets, and survival tips, maps of New York City. And it is just absolutely gorgeous inside. It has just so many things going on. I, I love it. I... I absolutely do. I really want to go through these pages one by one and look at them and just marvel. Marvel at the beauty of these pages. And yeah, <laughs> that's what it is. I, I think I'll read it soon and I honestly can't wait because it's New York City and I, I, I love New York. <laughs> can I say? Then I have Godere by Mary Roach. This is the Italian translation of Bonk, the curious coupling of science and sex. So basically this nonfiction book is about sex. And I think it's gonna be good. I hope it's going to be good. We'll see. Another Italian book this time written by an Italian author is E poi basta, Manifesto di una donna nera di Esperanza Ripanti. After what happened, after the video that kind of shook the whole world, rightly so, unfortunately so, unfortunately because it shouldn't have happened and racism shouldn't exist, but it does, so we need to fight it to actively fight it. After what happened, I wanted to read more books by black authors, but the thing is, Everything I was finding online was mostly based on the American experience of racism. And while that is also very important to know, to understand, to be aware of, I also wanted to find something that was closer to me. So I searched and searched. <laughs> And I found this book. I don't know if this is a series of essays or just a memoir, but it talks about the life of Esperanza Ripanti. She was born in Rwanda, then moved to Italy. She has studied here, she has gone to college here, so she is Italian. And I want to read about her experience living in Italy and being black. The last book I have to show you guys in this haul is A Room with a View by E.M. Foster. And this is another classic that is known for being one of the first LGBT classics. I don't know much about it. I know that it's set in the English countryside, if I'm not mistaken. It might also take place partly in Italy, I think. I was looking for the edition with this cover. I got it from that website I was talking to you about before and I'm very excited to read it hopefully very soon. So this was it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. I have filmed for a very long time. I don't know how long this video is going to be. I apologize but I hope you enjoyed watching. Please let me know in the comments if you have read any of these books, if you have liked them, where I should start. Uh, just let me know in the comments because you guys know that I love talking to you and I'll see you soon with another video. Warm hugs.